it's that time again. Yep. We are Team Wester, and you are the most important thing to us. Team Wester Podcast. It's all about the team. Welcome back to another exciting edition of the Team Wester Podcast. I'm Clay Moden with Brad Gelber, and joining us today, Wester team member Dawson Knox. Welcome back. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. How's the off season going so far? It's been great. Uh, we've been back up here for about seven or eight weeks now doing workouts, OTAs, little walkthroughs and stuff here and there, just kind of getting back into the swing of things. Now, do you split your time between Nashville and Buffalo throughout the year or, you know, when the off season's gone, it's back to Tennessee? Yeah. Um, when the off season hits and we get some off time, I'm in Nashville for the most part. I'll take some trips here and there, seeing friends and family, but um, OTAs, I'm up here, you know, for whatever, eight or nine weeks that is. And then after mini camp, we usually have about five weeks off that I'll kind of do some traveling, be back home for some of it. Yeah. So speaking of traveling, any, any fun trips planned this year? I know we were just talking off camera, maybe about some concerts you might be going to any, anything planned up? Yeah. So CMA Fest is this weekend in Nashville, really excited for that. But, um, I also have a week in Hawaii planned that I'm super excited for. I've been once, um, one of my best friends from college, Jordan Tamu, um, just won like XFL player of the year. Um, he's, uh, he should be signing with the team here soon, but you know, thankfully we have the same off time. So I'm going to go visit him, see his family, um, do some hikes, sit on a beach. We'll, uh, we'll do a few workouts, but it'll be a nice little vacation before the season starts. Any surfing? Never tried that before? I've tried surfing once. It was really hard. Um, pretty afraid of sharks so <laughs> yeah that that's definitely uh, something to be yeah worried. i tried it once out in california in newport beach um and it's fun but i'm more of a just sit on the beach and chill type so, of guy but you seem like pretty adventurous too right obviously yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the sports you're in adventure and uh have you ever tried skydiving or anything like that or is there a limit to yeah, what i was gonna say there, Knox would do right like or is in contractually, are you like not allowed to do certain things? Because I feel like I've heard that with players. Yeah. Before too. So there's a few things in our contract where if we do them and get hurt, they can we like did. either cut us without having to pay us, or we have to repay some of our signing bonus. Um, so I think skydiving's on there. Um, I love skiing. It's one of my favorite things yeah. ever. But I haven't since senior year of high school. Okay. Just. I'm afraid of, you know, to protect something. those knees. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to protect the knees at all costs. But as soon as I'm done with football, skydiving is at the top of my list that, that I haven't done yet. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely do a lot of skiing. I, I want to learn how to surf. Um, Got to get over the fear of sharks first. But, um, yeah, there's a few things that I'll do as soon as I'm done with football. Start in a controlled environment where there's no uh, wildlife right. to sneak up. Yeah, I know. Gosh, <laughs> I'm, yeah, sharks just scare me. I know one thing, too, you, you enjoy doing is golf. Obviously, that's something you, you and Josh share in common. I, I don't think Dion's quite a, the golfer himself <laughs> there. But, um, you know, in terms of golfing, like, have you, I guess, have you ever played with Josh? I'm pretty sure you have. But, like, any, any courses you're planning to attend this summer or offseason? Um, yeah, shoot. I've, I've had the golf bug for about two years. Yeah. I started playing about two years ago. I'm still terrible. Josh is actually pretty good. Yeah. So it's frustrating playing with him. Yeah. You know, I hate when he wins everything. But – um, he's a really good player. I got to play Pelican Hill with him this off season with Matt Barkley too, and Josh's dad. So that was really fun, but I don't have anything planned in terms of like a famous course or anything. There's, there's a bunch of good courses in Nashville, but got a, got a nice little bucket list of golf, you know, courses I'd love to play. Sure. You know? It seems like most professional athletes can pick up any sport or have <laughs> done other sports. So if it's not golf, is it basketball? Is it baseball? Like, Throughout your life and career, what's the other go-to? Shoot. I mean, I used to play everything as a kid. The one sport I never played was baseball. Interesting. Um, for whatever reason, I was always a soccer guy. Maybe the guy. speed of the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. It seemed a little boring <laughs> at that age. But um, I think golf is just such a popular sport because it's very non-taxing physically. Mm. Um, you can just yeah. pick it up and go. But I think it's also – the hardest sport in the world like I'm convinced it's the hardest sport ever even if you know you're an athlete it's hard to pick up those clubs and go hit a ball straight yeah, it's tough for sure um and you know one thing I think a lot of people in this area just enjoyed was the PGA tour being in Rochester oh, which yeah. was a really cool event um some of the guys I, I'm not sure if you got a chance to to be here for that at all but um it seemed like a pretty pretty cool event that they yeah were I was actually down at the uh, down at the beach in Florida with my family mm -hmm. we had a or some friends too but um, I wanted to be there for that. I heard it was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually got to play Oak Hill last year during camp cool. 
and it was beautiful. But um, hopefully one of these years I can go when it's actually in Rochester again. Right. So camp's going to be coming up, obviously. We're getting ready for the next season. Uh, but the big news around Buffalo is the stadium that's going to be happening, the brand-new stadium. 2026 is the opening. Uh, as of now, they're going to look at that year. Do you guys get any input when it comes to stadium design? They say, hey, Dawson, what do you want in the locker room? Does that happen at all? I think that's more of a Josh Allen caliber <laughs> thing. Um, I don't have any say, or at least I haven't yet, but um, – I don't know if the field's going to be turf or grass. I think that would be my biggest request would be a grass field. Interesting. Just something about it's a little less taxing on the knees and ankles, a lot less injuries, mm. um, just feels better to play on. So I think if I have one request, it would be for grass. For, for the average fan who can't get to a locker room, a professional locker room like that, is there something that you would say would be a great addition or who do you think has the best locker rooms throughout the NFL? Oof. Um, so our game day locker room is different than our everyday locker room in the facility. Um, the snack section's huge. Um, <laughs> Lots some, of food. Yeah, yeah, need a lot of food. Some good coffee makers. Um, good sound systems. Big. Okay. But also the training room's big too. I'd love a hot tub. You know, get warmed up before the game. Maybe a cold tub for after. Um, but yeah, I think just a few things here and there that we don't have right now that could be great additions, but. Um, the game day locker room for us is a lot smaller than our normal locker room. It's a lot more compact. And is there any sort of like, I know competitive advantage, whatnot, they sometimes put the, the visiting team in a locker room that maybe isn't as conducive to yeah. relaxing. Is there, are there any, you know, I don't want to necessarily call anyone out, but is there any ones you've been to maybe that you were like, yeah, I'd rather not go, go back to that Oof. one again. Yeah. I mean, there, there's some really nice ones, but for the most part, it's just kind of bare bones. You know, you don't really need to give the opposing team a right. super nice locker room. Um, Detroit is yep. one that's really say, small. Yeah. Um, and there's like lockers that it's in this thin hallway, right? When you walk into the main locker room. So it's, people are stepping over each other, <laughs> yeah. bags all over the place. Um, so that's one that comes to mind when I think of locker rooms that aren't ideal to go play at. Have you seen some of the designs for the new stadium at all? Have you looked at it? I over? have. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. I'm super massive. excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, massive. I mean, just the outside of it looks amazing. Um, I think they're adding a lot of extra boxes and suites too. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Do you guys too, like what, I, you know, I know you said passively involved, like you're not like sitting down with, okay, what does Dawson Knox want in the, in the stadium? But when the talks back then were about, you know, either having it be maybe downtown or in the Harbor or keeping it in Orchard Park, was there any sort of like discussion amongst the players? Like, you know, it'd be cool to have it downtown or no, you know what? It's pretty cool out here staying in Orchard Park. It's its own tailgating haven type of thing. Was, was that yeah. ever discussed at all with the guys? Yeah. Every now and then yeah. um, there'd be pros and cons of being downtown, but I think everyone for the most part wanted to stay in Orchard Park, just the feeling of the small town, sure. um, you know, almost in the middle of a neighborhood um, tailgating central. Yep. It'd be hard to have those same parking lots downtown. Um, so I think it's huge that we're staying in Orchard Park. You know, obviously you're active off season during the season, the OTAs, but you're a charitable guy, generous guy. Um, a lot of big events coming up this year you have uh, on the calendar already at all? Um, yeah, so we have a um, Punt Foundation event down in Nashville. This will be our, I think, third year doing it. Um, it's been awesome. It's on the City Tap rooftop. Um, last year was hot, so we yeah, needed some extra fans up there. But we had a great turnout. We usually do a live auction. Um, just kind of a fundraiser for Punt. Um, I'm also hosting a kids camp here in Rochester next not this weekend, but next weekend, um, those proceeds will benefit Punt as well. Um, but besides that, I, I'd love to get a golf tournament going one yeah. year. We've kind of we kind of looked into doing that this year. We didn't have the time to get it done, but I think a cool you know charity golf tournament would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, we actually have our West Her golf tournament we just had last weekend, so maybe next year we can find a way to kind of tie it all yeah. together with you. Um, not to put your your representation here on the spot but I was chatting with Bailey and I know she mentioned um I think every time we do a podcast I tell her I'll, I'll give her a shout out so this is Bailey shout out um but <laughs> shout out to no Bailey. um in terms of she mentioned possibly something you guys are looking to do with punt next year maybe too is some sort of like fashion show type of deal maybe with like your socks the knock socks type right. of thing so is is that something you guys yeah are I actually forgot well? to mention that we're looking to doing that in uh, November, mm -hmm. um, it'll be kind of a pajama fashion party where a player gets paired up with a kid and uh, you wear matching PJs, go downtown. I think we're doing it at Resurgence. Yep. Um, 
it'll be kind of a fun night of just some fashion walkways, maybe some karaoke, um, some good food, um, but get a lot of the kids involved and kind of have some meet and greets with some of the players too. I mean, how exciting for the kids for that. That yeah. is incredible. Awesome. Oh, I'm yeah. excited to work PJs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right? Yeah, I mean, cool. and make some money, you know, for a great cause doing it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so Looking that'll forward be to that. awesome. Yeah, now, I'm is that something excited. that will be like a ticketed event? You have to... That's a good question. Yeah. Um, that's something the punt will handle. Yeah. Um, and I, I imagine gonna, that will sell out very yeah. fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure there's, you know, all their ways of doing it. But I'm mm-hmm. going to try to get a few of the teammates, a few of my teammates yeah. to come with me. Um, but also we have the um, gala. It's like a wine pairing, um, kind of a more formal event for punt. And that's, I think that's the Friday before the first game. Um, and it's at a really cool venue downtown. I, I think it was an old church. Um but that's a great night. Everyone's dressed up. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, I think it's like a six-course meal yeah. paired with different wines. Um, and there's an auction for that one, too. So I think um, last year they raised, you know, six figures. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, and then, you know, in terms of obviously now we're, we're in the off season, so we just kind of had the draft not too long ago. Um, and obviously, I think in the storylines a little bit, um, you know, you've been kind of tied in just because the Bills ended up drafting, you know, quote, tight end and Dalton Kincaid, who I think probably maybe technically is a tight end, but more of like a slot receiver type of deal. So obviously um, you guys share an agency or representation both. Um, So what's kind of the story you guys, I know it kind of got publicized that you shot him a text right away or, and there was a tweet that went out. So how's that been kind of, there's been pictures of you guys at practice together, like welcoming him in um, to Buffalo. Oh, he's been awesome. Very down to earth. Um, very likable. I mean, you know, he's a the type of guy I'd probably hang out with off the field too. We've already gone out to the driving range together. Uh, we filmed some content out there for the Bills too. Yeah. But um, no, it's been great. Like he's a down to earth guy. Very likable. Great athlete. Mm-hmm. Great hands. I mean, very polished for coming straight out of college. So he's. Um, I think learning the playbook is always the number one struggle for almost everybody coming out of college because it's just a completely different language. Yep. Mm-hmm. But he's already starting to get the hang of it. Um, it's been really impressive. So I think, you know, everyone's super excited to see what he's going to do this season. Obviously, you've taken him under your wing. But for other rookies that come in, yeah. now that you've been an established you know, veteran for Buffalo and the NFL, uh, what, what's your message to rookies? Like, what's your, like, just keep this in mind type of advice? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just getting with a guy that's either a veteran or has been doing it for a while or even someone that's been in the league for three or four years that kind of knows the right routine, how to handle the offseason, how to do the right thing off the field, be in the training room when you're supposed to be there. Um, Just getting a guy that, you know, can kind of guide you through the right stuff. Like Lee Smith was that guy for me when I came into Buffalo. Um, Just teaching me how to break down film, teaching me that, you know, the training room isn't necessarily a bad thing always communicate well with the coaches, ask questions when you got them. So just kind of having a good role model slash, um, you know, mentor on the team is huge. Do the rookies have to carry your lunch around? Do you guys have any (laughs) hazing? Like any any, weird routine or anything like that? You know, there's there's not much of that. Um, Dalton might have a nice tight end dinner for us coming up. There you go. Um, (laughs) He's already done a couple cool things for the room. Nice coffee maker. Uh, but I'm sure we'll be able to brainstorm some things. We could probably take some suggestions from fans as yeah. well. But <laughs> sure. um, as a first rounder, he's got a pretty good budget for us. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what that's going to look like. I can't wait for the season to see what happens. It's going to yeah. be exciting. And obviously, uh, aside from just the draft, there's been quite a few um, you know, free agent additions you guys have welcomed to the team. And it seems like you're really solidifying kind of the team overall, trying to you know get over the hurdle, take that next step as cliche as that sounds, but, um, you know, there's been some coaching changes on the team too. I know Sean's going to be kind of moving more back into an active role as the defensive coordinator, if you will. Um, but now another year with Ken Dorsey as the offensive coordinator, are you guys like feeling really good about this team as a whole, the coaching staff, everything going into the next year? And do you guys get excited about some of the free agent additions you're making as well? Yeah, for sure. I think everyone's super excited for this year. I think, you know, we got all the right pieces. Um, Big Baller Bean has been doing his thing. Unbelievable. Um, Pretty awesome addition with Leonard Floyd just here today, I think. Yep. Um, Or maybe yesterday. But, uh, yeah, there's been some great additions. But also we know that, you know, we got all the right guys. So we're super excited to see where that takes us, you know, praying that we all stay healthy. I know there were some big injuries last year. Um, A lot of adversity to fight through, but – 
Um, we're hoping this year is a whole different year, which it will be. We always talk about how each team kind of have a, has a life of its own. Even though it's most of the same guys, there's some new additions, kind of a new feel for the team, new coaches. But um, we love Coach Dorsey on offense. He's been doing a great job for us. And, you know, he's kind of starting to feel what he likes to call. And, you know, he's getting with Josh and getting some of his – um, favorites called more often too. So I think, you know, anytime you're a first year coordinator, you're going to have things you figure out, but, um, he's been doing awesome. We're super excited. A lot of primetime games this yep. season too. Whole lot that has to be time. exciting. Oh my gosh. That's my, that's my favorite thing ever. Yeah. When, when the lights are on and you know, everyone in the country's watching, mm -hmm. um, I love the primetime games. It says a lot about the team, right? The right. expectation. Yeah. And some guys, you know, don't really like the primetime games cause it's at night. You're kind of waiting around all day. You know, you got eight hours to kill, just kind of sitting around the hotel. But something Will about... you watch other games during the day? Sometimes. Like the one o'clock games or whatever? Sometimes you'll, you know, watch a few possessions or something. But for the most time, I'm, you know, either watching a TV show or a movie, chilling, might mm -hmm. take a walk around the city, wherever we're at. Um, but it's really just a whole lot of relaxing, slowly getting your mind right for what's to come later. And I know one thing that is brand new this year is you guys are going to be playing in London um, for the international game. So, you know, I was thinking about it from your guys' perspective, because that has to be pretty cool to get to play on like an international stage. But was there any sort of like, that's awesome, but we're also kind of losing a home game mm -hmm. here in Buffalo. So was there any sort of mixed feelings? Are you like super pumped to, to be on that stage? What was kind of the, the feeling about that? I'm, I couldn't be more excited. Yeah. I've never been to Europe. Yep. Um, I think it's a pretty awesome fan base over there. Just yeah for all different teams. Um, I remember tuning into a few of those early games and you see almost every jersey from every team in the sure. stadium. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be really cool. I'm a, I love soccer, so it's going to be cool playing at the Hotspur Stadium. Um, but I think it's going to be pretty great. I think we're leaving like Thursday night, get in Friday morning, straight into a normal Friday routine. Yep. So it's going to be a grind, but I think everyone's super excited and for it. And the Buffalo fans travel well. Yeah. They will oh, be yeah. there in full oh, force. Yeah. Everyone's oh, already gosh. booking up the flights to London. And oh, they, they might sell out the stadium with just Bills fans. Yeah. Which, I believe it's going to be true. Yeah, we're sure. really excited for that one. Yeah. Well, looking forward to it, man. Again, oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's as slow as the, things seem to go, the season will be here before you know it. Oh, no question. It always creeps up creeps up on you. That countdown always Catches comes up. quick. Yeah. yeah, so everyone's just dying to get back out on the field. You're kind of at the point of the offseason where you're like, all right, it's, it's time to get back going. So we're going to be ready. It's going to be fun. Is there anything you change in your routine? So, like, maybe, I don't want to say diet or exercise, whatever it is that – you can take a step back in the off season for a little while. And then it's like, okay, at this date, I really need to start focusing again on my diet on this, this, and this is there sort of like a calendar for that sort of thing. Yeah. There's kind of two separate off seasons, if you will, like right after the last game, we usually have about, I don't know, two months off to where you kind of just let your body heal. Um, you're working out a little bit, but mostly just so you don't get too out of shape. Um, so that's kind of, where everything's not as focused, but the the off season right after mini camp, where I think we'll we'll have like five weeks off leading into camp, that's kind of the ramp up period where what you eat becomes a little more important. <laughs> you know, being in cardio shape is of all importance because when camp hits, it's full speed football. So it's if you're not in shape, you're gonna get exposed pretty quick. <laughs> so I think that's there, there's a pretty big difference. So kind of that July break is kind of a refocusing point where you just got to be on point for almost everything is, is also is there any sort of like the player driven meetups in the off season so I know a few years back when Steph joined the team like it was like publicized him and Josh had like some throwing sessions down in Miami type right. of deal is that something that's like contingent upon the player group like is it the tight ends have to make that decision if they want to catch passes together or if you want to meet up with Josh in the off season like how does that guy work for you guys yeah so I think it was like that COVID year maybe, um, or maybe right before COVID, we all met in Miami, did a, like a week down there, kind of just staying polished, keeping that timing right, making sure we don't go too long without, you know, working on certain things. Um, this year, you know, he's been talking about maybe um, either going out to California and throwing, just getting together for a few days just to kind of make sure we're staying in sync. Um, but nothing crazy. It, it should just be like a little three or four day trip. So he, he, I don't think we know exactly when we'll do that. But usually, you know, nine or 10 of the guys will go out and get together for a few days in that July break. 
I think one last thing I would ask before we, we, we let you go here, because we got a, a jam-packed day here for the uh, Team West Hurst shoot. Um, you know, in terms of the Team West Hurst shoot, this is, I think, you've been with us a few years now. I think this is your second year at the shoot with us. So, you know, for maybe people watching that don't know, like, what it goes into, it's going to be you, Josh, and Dion as active players, along with Steve Tasker, who's been with us a long time. What's it like kind of being at, like, a TV content shoot day with some of the guys you play with, where it's maybe not your natural element to uh, you yeah. know record tv commercials or i mean you're pretty great at sitting down and chatting with us but like you know lines in front of a camera or pictures with luggage and things like that like what's that like when you get to do it maybe with some of the guys you're friends with on the it's team? a lot more fun when, when it's with teammates like yeah. josh or dion um anytime it's by yourself it can be a little weird awkward you know kind of holding poses looking at the camera right. all day but <laughs> right. Um, anytime it's with your teammates, it's a little more fun. So I know they got some good skits and stuff for us for commercials, a couple funny photo shoots. So it's going to be cool. You know, I'm going to get my acting career started of the day. I'm <laughs> yeah. super excited. There you go. Well, we're really excited to have you. Thank you for sitting down with us again. And I, I know hopefully we'll be able to catch up with you during the season again, like we did last year, but uh, this has been a lot of fun to, to debrief with you in the off season yeah, here. For sure. Good I luck with all guys. the uh, fundraising events this year as well. Oh, thank yeah. you. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm looking excited. forward to that pajama night. That, oh that, yeah, I know. It's going to be, that's going to be a good night. It's well, going to be fun. Going to be an exciting season. Certainly a lot of things going on for Brad Gelber. I'm Clay Moden with Dawson Knox, and we'll see you again for another exciting edition of the team West Herb podcast. Let's go Buffalo. Buffalo.